Now let's go over question number 942. DI string match. A permutation perm of m plus 1 integers of all integers in the range 0 to n can be represented as a string s of length where n is. Now this question sounds really confusing but all it's saying is that we're going to have a range of values where we start with 0 and we're going to have up to n elements. Now let's say that we are just looking at our first example. So our range is going to be, we have how many elements? We have four, right? So that's going to be zero, one, two, three, and four. So this is going to be our range of values that we're going to get. So this is n plus one elements, right? Because we have this zero. Our length is four because the length of our string is four, right? And we have to account for zero. So that's why it's n plus 1. Really, uh, that's all it's saying. So when I first looked at this question, I was like, what, what is this question saying? But this is this is it. This, they're just telling us the range of our numbers that we can get. Now, we have two conditions. If our current string is i, permat index i is going to be less than permat index i plus 1. And if it's d, it's going to be permat index i is greater than permit index i plus 1. Given a string x, we construct permutation perm and return it. If there are multiple valid permutation perm, return any of them. So ignore all this, I'll just expand it a little differently. So we have our given ranges, right? And let's say that this is our output. Well, what we're going to do is if our current string is i, we're going to start from the beginning of the array. If it's d, we're going to start from the end of the array. Our first element or first character or first letter is i, right? Because we have i, d, i, d. So we're looking at i. And remember that if it's i, we want to start in the beginning of our array. So we simply just add that 0. And now it's our d. Well, our d is at 4. So we add 4. Where we have next letter is i. So we add the next element, which is 1. And next is d, which is the next element which is 3 and finally you just add the last one which is going to be 2 and we have our result 0 4 1 3 2 not bad right it's really easy I think this whole thing just really confuses you a little bit more but all this thing is just add the correct number into our output so let's just go over this one more time let's look at this one so this is going to be our output and we have our string d d i so now what's going to be our range? Well, we have length of 3. So that's going to be 3 plus 1 because remember, we have 3 plus 1 because we have to account for 0. So we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. And remember, we're going to have two indexes, one that starts at the beginning, one that starts at the end. You can name it start or end. That's really up to you. But let's just use i and d. So at first, our i is going to be at 0, and d is going to be the last one. Well, our current letter happened to be d, so we bring our 3. And next is another d, so we bring our 2. And next is our i, so we bring our 0, and just bring in the last number, 1. So we have our result. So question itself, or the problem itself is actually easier than what question makes it seem to be. So try to implement this solution. I think given all this, so now that we went over it, I think it should be way more easier to implement this. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks. Now that we went over how to solve this problem, let's try to implement a, a solution. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable named output and obviously this is where we are going to store our output and let's just return that over here and we forgot a t. Alright, so that looks good and now I need to create an array of values or possible values. So I need the range. So let's just call it actually range. Let or const range is equal to, well our range is going to be zero from the length of the array, right? So there's a way to create a array. So we're going to use spare operator array, pass in our length. Our length of the array is going to be s.length plus one. And what we're going to use is we're going to use the map method to fill our array, the current value and index. And we're going to pass in our index. And it says array is not defined because we have an extra r. Okay, delete that. All right, let's console log our ranges. And you can see that, let's just comment these two out. You can see that we have zero through four, 
we have length of 4 for our string and we have our correct range of numbers. Okay, so first part is done. Now we need to be able to iterate through our given string. So let's make a regular for loop. And there is one thing that you have to keep in mind. Well, we have to add 1 to our length. And why is that? Well, let's just console log our string at index i. Now, if you printed it, we are actually getting all the characters and undefined. So why are we iterating through this when we are getting undefined? And the reason is because we want to run it one more time because remember that our range of values is going to have five elements since the length of our characters or the letters or the string is four. So we have to iterate one more time and we'll handle this correctly later. Now I need my first condition. So that's the case if my current string, if this is equal to let's do i. Well, if it's equal to i, I want to start from the beginning of my range. So let's create two variables. So these are going to be our pointers. Let capital I is going to be zero and let D is going to be, well, it's going to be the last element. So that's going to be represented by s.length. And let's just console log our I here. Let's console log our D and actually console log our range one more time. And you can see that I is starting at index zero and D is starting at index four. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's our index. Now, if our current character or letter is equal to i, we want the first element, right? So let's handle that. So if it's i, I want to add it to my output variable. And what do you want to add? Well, we want to add the first element. So that's going to be range at index i. And we have to push that push. So we add it using push. And you can see that for now, we have a zero up here. But you have to consider that after we add it, we have to move our pointer to the next one. So we have to increment our i by one. So let's do that. So we can do something like this. Or to make this more compact, what we can do is, well, actually, first let's increment our i. That looks good. And now we have to consider the other case. So else, if it's the other case, what do you want to do? Well, we want to put the element from the end of our array. So let's do output that push. We get our range, and that's going to be an index D. When we add an element to our output, we want to decrement by one because we want to keep moving down towards the left, whereas I is moving towards the right. So as you can see, we have our result. Let's just uncomment these two, and you can see that everything is looking good. Now let's clear up our code and run this and go through how this is working. Well, first I can actually just get rid of my increments here, decrements here, and then just decrement here and increment here. So that way it looks more clean. So we have our solution, it looks good. Now, how does this work? So let's go through our code. Well, first we create a range of values and we did that using this. And this method will come in handy when you want to pre-fill your ar arrays. So try to memorize it. it. It should be really helpful in the future. Now we created two indexes, one that starts at the beginning and one that starts at the end. And these two pointers are simply just moving across our range. Well, I is going to move towards the right, whereas D is going to move towards the left. So we're decrementing it. I we're incrementing it. And now we have our range. And now we have to iterate through all the characters in our string. We start at index zero. And remember that we have to add one to that because we want that extra last remaining value and we want to add that. And it doesn't matter if it's undefined. If it's undefined, our else cause is going to handle that. So don't worry. So if our current character is equal to i, we add element at index capital I to our output. So in the first iteration, that's going to be zero. Else we add element at index D and we decrement that by one each time. So in the first iteration, it's going to be, since it's i, we add 0. Next is d, we add 4. And now our i becomes 1 at index 1, and d becomes 3 at index 3. Next is another i, so we add our 1 to our output. And next is d, and we add 3. And finally, we have no more characters. Now our character is undefined. When it's undefined, we just add the last one and we are done and we get our result. Now let's try to optimize our solution. Now let's go back up to our previous solution. Well, if you remember, we created a array with ranges, right? 
So this is a another O of n operation, and this for loop is another O of n operation. Well, since we have two loops, it's technically O of 2n, but we simplify it because we have to drop our constants, so it's O of n. And space is the same. Well, we have two variables that's going to be O of 2n, but we're going to actually save it or optimize solution so that it's just one output variable O of n for our result. So although time complexity might be the same, O of n for both, well, this one is technically O of 2n, and our second one, our next solution is going to be just clean O of n solution. Now, same as before, we actually need a variable for our output. So let's do output set equal to an empty array. And let's just return that over here right now. And we are going to declare two variables. Well, same as before, i is going to be 0, start at the beginning of the array. And let d is equal to s.length at the end of the array. Now, we need to read through our string. So let i is equal to 0, i is going to be less than string.length plus 1. And remember why we have to do add 1 to our length, right? Because we have 5 elements in our range of numbers. And that's going to be i++. plus plus. Well, 5 numbers only for the first argument, so id, id. And this will be 4, and this will be 4. So we have length plus 1 number of ranges in our range. Now we need our if statement. So same as for if our current string, current letter is equal to capital I. Well, we have to push in something, right? So this time, instead of creating a range of values, we're simply just going to insert our index. So that's going to be output that push and we push our index and we just increment our index by one when we have a i otherwise we're going to output that push we push in our decrement counter and we decrement by one over here and here you can see that we have exactly the same solution we were able to save some time and space by getting getting rid rid of a loop and we don't have an extra array for a range of numbers. We simply just use our indexes for our values. Now that's it for our solution. I hope this was helpful. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks.